Hi everybody, I hope you are all well and welcome to my first review of 2022. Um, it's yeah, it's been a pretty hectic week. I've been really really busy since uploading those um, five videos on, was it New Year's Day? No, it was the day after. Um, cause yeah, New Year's Day was Saturday and I went to my parents' house on Sunday. Um, so there's, there's been, obviously I've been back at work. I've been crazy busy cause this is the busiest time of year where I work. Um, and, uh, I've, you know, just been trying to get through as much as I can, been doing a load of reading, watching loads of stuff. Um, but I've decided that, you know, taking the pressure off myself, you know, which I mentioned as part of my what I'm reading in 2022 video, um, I'm applying that to other areas of my life, like my work. And I'm um, like, you know, I'm going to spend my evenings, it, I'm, once my seven hours are up uh, that I work because I'm contracted to work seven hours a day, uh, five days a week. Um, once my time is up, my time is up. I'm not going to stress myself out and overwork and in order to, um, you know, prioritise things which I, I don't, you know, quite possibly if I stress out so much about it could make me ill. I'm not going to do that. Um, and so I've kind of been this week in a lot better headspace and this pressure of, of reading and such um, taken off of me for 2022 really helped as well. So I've had this this kind of combination of busy, a bit tiring week, obviously back at work in the new year and everything. But I'm I'm just you know doing what I'm doing, feel what I feel. Um, so yeah, and it's been great. And because of that, I have gotten th I've gone through a lot this week. So I have. We've got, we've had, I've had to write it down, I've got a list right here next to me. So I had the Harry Potter 20th anniversary documentary, which I cried like a baby all the way through. I've watched it like four times now, still cry when I watch it. Yes, I know. I hope they bring it out on DVD or Blu-ray because I would love to own a copy to add to my, my collection uh, of, of Harry Potter stuff. Uh, then I watched Four Lives, the BBC drama about um, Stephen Port uh, and uh, the, the four men that he killed, um, which was good, but it wasn't great. I, I kind of, I'm not sure why Sheridan Smith was cast for it um, and it felt a bit unemotional, um, but it told the story well and, you know, held up the, the problems of the police and everything and how they copped up the investigation. Then I watched Anne, the four-part um, drama about uh, Anne Williams, who uh, whose son Kevin Williams died at the um, Hillsborough Stadium disaster in 1989, and her fight to get justice for his and the other um, 96 uh, people who died at the time of, of fighting for. Um, for justice and everything there had been 96 victims but since then there's been a 97th um so yes yeah, so there's 97 in total so kevin was one and there was 96 remaining that was stunning that was oh my god i cried and i loved every single second of it um and then on Friday, we had a Discovery Witches Series 3 came out. And because I've got Sky, and it's a Sky original, instead of having to watch every week, I got access to the entire box set, and I binge-watched it in one go, and I bawled like a baby. So basically, in my, you know, winding down each day of the week, I've just been crying. <laughs> but in a good way. In a good way, crying because drama and everything has... has affected me emotionally um so yeah good crying um, <laughs> um so yeah it's been quite a hell of a week so i'll put trailers and such for to each of those in the description um uh, of this video as well if you want to check them out but i strongly strongly recommend um the harry potter 20th anniversary and Anne, and then a discovery which is series three which oh god it was it was a wonderful way to end it they adapted the book so well and Stephen Curry who plays Galaglass oh my god I adore him I adore him all right I I don't say this lightly Galaglass is my book husband I I always have like book best friends uh, and and everything hundreds thousands of them but never a book boyfriend or a book husband so it's a big fucking deal that I would say that and Galagas is my book husband. And I knew that the show was going to do it right because 
my heart breaks for Galagas in book three of, of the Discovery Witches trilogy. It's just, I, I love him so much. And Stephen Curry just played him beautifully. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's kind of what I've been up to this week. Rather a long introduction. I know I'm five minutes in and I haven't yet started my review of what I've been reading. And what I've been reading is 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. Now, when I introduced this, I referred to her as Helen. And throughout reading this book, I was referring to her as Helen as I was reading it in my mind and, and everything. Uh, and then near the end of the book, she comes to London. She meets somebody who she's been uh, writing to over the years and it says it's Helen and they're like oh god sorry every time I've read one of your letters I've always called you Helen because you know so it's Helen so I apologize Helen for getting your name wrong um so yeah so what happened was that yesterday which is Saturday I was planning to go into town and you know have a look around that kind of thing and then open the curtains and it was horrible weather and I was like what is the point of dragging my butt around town uh, and everything in the pouring miserable weather um, when uh, you know I can just go another time and uh, I can sit and read so I basically read nearly all of this yesterday and it's not a long book as you can see it's hang on how many pages is it it's like about 300 I think oh no 230 pages so yeah, so it's not very long at all. And this is actually two books in one. You have 84 Charing Cross Road, uh, which is the correspondence between Helen and the various staff at 84 Charing Cross Road. And then the second half uh, is Helen's diary entries from when she visited London in the summer of 1971. So, yeah, so you've got like a it's a mixed bag, as it were, of stuff. Um, but it's yeah it's a non-fiction book so it's not you know it's not like you're going to be having prose as it were um but helen you can tell that she was a writer she talks about how she's a writer in her correspondence with um those at uh marks and co um to, uh, who uh, the booksellers who are based at 84 charing cross road she talks about being a writer and everything and it, it it's yeah her diary entries are so beautifully written um it, it you could you could potentially read it as pro um prose sorry um but it's not obviously it's a diary entry so i you have to kind of really use your imagination to think okay how would the how do these people look how do they react to things you know that kind of thing um and so yeah so it's 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 really open as it were to interpretation of how you see the bookshop, how you see the characters and everything. Um, but what is wonderful is that in the correspondence, you also have correspondence between Helen and her friends, um, and uh, as well as the various staff members at, uh, at the bookshop. And one of her friends actually goes to London and she says, oh, I visited the bookshop. And she describes it, and it's so beautifully, beautifully described. Um, it's just like, okay, now I can properly see it in my head. And I found this utterly charming. It is so wonderful. I, I, I love, I love letters. I think you know, it's a, it's a lost art. Um, and there was actually, uh, there, there is actually a, a YouTube channel. I can't remember what the name of it is now, but um, th there was a book that came out years ago where it was a collection of letters throughout time um, covering wide, you know, areas of, of things from, you know, funny reviews to um, declarations of war uh, to letters from the front lines of war to home, you know, those kind of things. It, 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 was, it was this really wonderful collection of, of letters. And then um, they started sort of filming them at various venues about uh, where celebrities are reading out some, the letters. And they're absolutely wonderful. I, I will, if I remember to, I will put a link to one um, of my favourites uh, with uh, Olivia Coleman uh, in uh, 
in the description and uh yes you can see what it was like and i i loved i loved that i i thought it was wonderful um i can't remember the title of the book right now it's really really annoying me but again i'll put it in the description um so this was kind of like right up my alley and helen just her personality just beams throughout this book um frank the man who uh she writes to uh the the guy who's he's the first one to respond to one of her letters and then he is like the main contact for her but other staff members do send her letters from time to time and so there's this this friendship this bond between helen and and Frank that begins in 1949 and goes on for over 20 years uh, and her friendship with the other staff members goes on for over 20 years it's absolutely wonderful to to um read it to to get into her her head she adores books um she she just her her love of books I just I totally relate it to and um she finds that it, 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 it being in new york sorry i forgot to say she's in new york um the she, she really finds it difficult to get hold of some books because simply that they the books are by british authors um and she can't get hold of them and it's 1949 yes the the second world war has been over for some time but you know there's still things going on in the world and everything and the difficulty of getting books that that she needs to get hold of it really frustrates her and she finds this um advert for uh the the, the this company who's <laughs> located uh marks and co booksellers who's uh, located at 84 charing cross road and she writes to them just randomly just saying would you happen this is the list of books i need would you happen to be able to help me out um and they're able to fulfill it and it just it just rolls from there um and what i adore is that helen finds out like she um that there's still rationing going on even though it's 1949 and she's like the war's been over for ages what the hell so she's like right i'm gonna send you some food so she like sends eggs and meat and um tins of various jams and all of this lot uh and they and the way in which the staff members react to it it's just beautiful it's like how cecily uh bless her she she um she talks about her excitement of baking a cake something that we take for granted um that her, her children were so excited to see eggs and she made them a cake and how that that made her feel so happy uh, it's it's just wonderful and um, um another another person uh, uh who works there um talks about his because he lives with his great aunt that they haven't seen meat in years they obviously there was there was meat rationing but it was so small a lot of people kind of went without um uh, and he he's like she was so excited to see tinned meat it, it, you don't you don't understand how much that means to me um and it was oh it was just wonderful i loved loved that but most importantly i loved how helen becomes one of the family she is this woman from on the other side of the world who they've never seen and she uh, she's just welcomed in and you you feel her love for them and they and you feel um their love for her as well it's just it's absolutely beautiful beautiful book um and then having the joy of reading her actually going to london in 1971 um and obviously first stop is 84 charing crossroad and it's oh it filled my heart with joy i just i just sat here in my living room and just read throughout the day and it it just it was it was kind of like on a miserable day and you're soaking wet and you come home you know you've dried yourself off and having like a nice big bowl of soup warm soup you know and like some crusty bread or a sandwich or something with it as well and just 
nice hot cup of tea, they, that warming, um, gentle feeling and just lets you know that you're, you're, you're okay and you're safe and, you know, all that, just that, that true comfort food, that is what this book was for me. I, I just, I loved it. Absolutely loved every single second of it. And I love the fact that Helen doesn't hold back. You truly feel her personality. Like at one point, um, as to wrap the books in, Frank sends her a book, um, from old books that they that they just can't sell and you know and you know they're falling to bits they just they can't shift them so rather than just throwing them away they recycle them so they use the pages of the books to wrap up um the books that they're selling and Helen is horrified by this she's like you know I totally get that you're reusing pages but how can you rip pages from a book this is unreal and then she said and worst of all you provided me with pages about a battle which i read but it's in the middle and then you don't get the ending so i don't even know what battle is or how it happened what what the outcome was i am horrified <laughs> oh god it makes me laugh just just thinking of it um yeah she's she's wonderful absolutely wonderful um so i'm just going to read you uh, a couple of uh letters that i have here yeah so i'll read you uh, just just two um and this is from april 1951 uh and yeah uh, it's a really really lovely part that i that i that i really loved so Martin Co. Booksellers, 84 Charing Cross Road, London, 9th of April 1951 to Miss Helen Hanf, New York. Dear Miss Hanf, I expect you're getting a bit worried that we are not writing to thank you for your parcels and are probably thinking that we are, un are an ungrateful lot. The truth is I've been chasing around the country in and out of various stately homes in England trying to buy a few books to fill out our sadly depleted stock. My wife was starting to call me the lodger who, who just went home for bed and breakfast. But of course, when I arrived home with a nice piece of meat to say nothing of dried eggs and ham, then she thought I was a fine fellow and all was forgiven. It's a long time since we saw so much meat all in one piece. We should like to express our appreciation in some way or another. So we are sending by book post today a little book which I hope that you will like. I remember you asked me for a volume of Elizabethan love poems some time ago. Well, this is the nearest that I could get to it. Yours faithfully, Frank Dool from Marks & Co. I have card enclosed with the Elizabethan poets. To Helene Hanf, with best wishes and grateful thanks for your many kindnesses from all at 84 Charing Cross Road, London, April 1951. From 14 East 95th Street, New York City, April 16th, 1951. To all at 84 Charing Cross Road, thank you for the beautiful book. I've never owned a book before with pages edged all around in gold. Would you believe it arrived on my birthday? I wish you hadn't been so overcautious about putting an inscription on the card instead of on, uh, instead of on the flyleaf. It is the bookseller coming out of you all. You're afraid you decrease its value. You would have increased it for the present owner and possibly for the future owner. I love inscriptions on flyleafs and notes in margins. I like the comradery sense of turning pages that someone else has turned and reading the passages someone long, long gone has called my attention to. And why don't you sign your names? I expect Frank wouldn't let you. He probably doesn't want me writing love letters to anybody but him. I send you greetings from America. Faithless friend that she is pouring millions into rebuilding Japan and Germany while letting England starve. Someday, God willing, I'll get over there and apologise personally for my country's sins. And by the time I come home, my country will certainly have to apologise for mine. Thank you again for the beautiful book. I should try very hard not to get gin and ashes all over it. It's really much too fine for the likes of me. Yours, Helene Hanf. So, yeah, I just, I loved that. I just, I, I, there's something about Helene that I just 
completely um, connect to. And yeah, she's not afraid to get angry. She's not afraid to speak her mind. And like, there's there's this wonderful, wonderful bit which I have to to, to talk about because I think it's just brilliant that when she first sends um, meat to them, she sends it off. She's perfectly happy. And then suddenly the next day she has a panic and she sends an urgent letter. And she's like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. I just realised I am so stupid. Um, I just realised that the what the, the owners, uh, you know, Marks and Cohen. Cohen is a Jewish name. And um, I've I've gone and sent me. Is it kosher? Have I offended you? Please don't be, be offended. Please still send me books. I just, I'm really sorry for <laughs> this. <laughs> and it's just her her panic is so real and so <laughs> wonderfully put. I mean that was me. I, that isn't word for word, obviously, because I haven't got the page mark. Um, that's me just um, paraphrasing. But I just love the fact that she was like, "Oh my god, I'm going to offend these people. What the hell have I done?" Um, but yeah, no, they they're totally, totally very, very happy with what she sends. Um, and as I said, this this letter just to ask if they happen to have any books um, that she was after began this twenty year friendship uh, across across the seas, um, and. It, it just it's so interesting to read how you know different political situations are happening and um how america differs from uh from from the uk at the end of the 1940s going on to the 50s and then into the 60s and then 70s with the with the second um book the duchess of bloomsbury which is included in this um it was just an absolute joy to read and just the perfect way to start I think 2022 and given that my first read last year was Jaws which I was so super excited about and that was such a big disappointment this this is just this has restored my faith that the first book that I can read in a year in, in any given year um can be brilliant so yay Thank you, Helen Hanf, um, for for writing this and for you know collecting the letters together and publishing them. It it was an absolute gem of a book. I I adored every single second, um, and yeah, I just I loved it. I loved it. Now, funnily enough, there was a film that was made in 1987, I think it was, um, with Anthony Hopkins and and Bancroft. Uh, Sorry, yeah, Bancroft. I so if it's Bancroft or Bancroft, I'm like, why would you do Bancroft? I just said in my head. And Bancroft. Funnily enough, there is a on the, on Sky. I've got access to a load of movie channels for free, and one of those is one that's called Great Movie Classics. Oh, well, oh, yes, Great Movie Classics because Great Movies is a separate one. And it just so happened randomly a few days ago they were showing 84 Charing Cross Road. So I recorded it uh, onto my Skybox and then right after, minutes after I finished reading this, I, I watched the film. And I love the film. The film is, is like word for word adapted from the letters from the book. Um, it, it was beautifully put together and because there is there there is you know, real pictures of the real Marks and Co. They were able to use that as a a, a guide for how the shot would look in the, in the film. And obviously, as I said, there's that, that description that her friend writes in a letter to Helen on her honeymoon uh, in London. And they did a wonderful job of uh, creating the shot. It, it was like how I imagined in my head. Um, it's so well put together and what I loved is that with the letters you either hear them as voiceover you have literally Helen is at her typewriter and she's writing um, and Anthony Hopkins uh, who plays Frank in London he um, is dictating them to uh, his secretary uh, or again in voiceover and it's from time to time they just they just interview just stare down the camera and just say the letters straight to so it's like Helen is addressing us and Frank is addressing us um and I loved like the additional cast I love that Judy Dench played uh Frank's uh, Frank's wife um there's some really like 
gem actors in in this in this film um and it was so lovely to to see them i i just i loved the film so well put together beautifully and um, told the story uh and i loved the way that it ended with what is the you know the very beginning of the duchess of bloomsbury when she goes to 84 charing cross road uh, in 1971 so yeah, I, I love the film. Annoyingly, I, before I started filming this, I just searched for the trailer on YouTube. Can't find the trailer. If you search 84 Charing Cross Road film, you can rent um, the, the film or there's loads of videos of scenes from the film. Not one trailer. So I probably might just put a, uh, actually the I think the first video I came across just happened to be the letter that I've just, I've just read out. So I might just, um, you know link that in the description as well so i've got i've got lots of things to link in the description today haven't i um so yeah uh well that's if i remember to do that when i when i go to upload later um <laughs> so overall really strongly recommend the film um it's it's just it's a lovely little little film and so well adapted from from the letters um and yeah i just helen i think you're you're I wish I I wish I knew you um, back back then. No, I think um, you'd be a really great friend to have because um, you, you came across you know in your this, this wonderful spirit, and I loved that. So thank you, Helen, for collecting together the letters and your diary entries to publish this book. So my usual questions: Would I read this again? Absolutely. I think this is going to become like one of my comfort reads. You know, sometimes when you, you just need a book that you've read before that will just perk you up. Kind of like how, uh, not necessarily to the same degree as how it lives in my heart and soul, but kind of like how I do with the Harry Potter books that, you know, I just can't, I just need to read that. I need to go back to that world and I'll need to go back to 84 Charing Cross Road. There is an audio book for, for this, but I didn't get a chance to listen to it because obviously I've been very busy watching various things um <laughs> as well as reading so uh i might check out the audiobook as well um so would i read any more of helen's writing definitely yeah i think i need to have a look into helen she mainly wrote for um like tv and such um so yeah i don't know what other books she published or if she published any other books i think she did but i don't know right now um so yeah but if there are any other books of hers i definitely check them out would i recommend this to anyone absolutely yes absolutely anyone that doesn't have to be those who love books but but definitely for those who do love books i would recommend um yeah anyone can pick this up and it was just a joy to read and yeah i loved it loved 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 84 charing cross road so those are my thoughts on 84 Charing Cross Road by Helen Hanf. Have you read this book? I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment in the comments box below. Give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Tell it to you, I'll let you decide. And I'll be back with my thoughts on my next read, which is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I can't believe I'm finally getting around to reading this book. Now, I realised after um, <laughs> after I filmed my announcement video that I kind of, the way that I described this book kind of implied that I have had it on my bookshelf for 10 years. That's not the case. Just to clarify, I did buy this in a book haul. Was it? I think December. You know, December, January time, twenty twenty, or was it two thousand nineteen? I can't. Well. It, in recent years I bought it but this is a book that has haunted me in bookshops for 10 years so just to clarify so I haven't owned it for 10 years it's just that um it's haunted me and haunted you know going please put me on your bookshelf for 10 years and I hadn't but now I am finally going to read this book and so yeah see what all the fuss is about so I am excited and I'll be back my thoughts on the night circus as soon as I'm done all right, guys. Bye.